have a free gift for each and every one of you. Now available our Empowered Life Topical Bible and Devotional. If there was ever a time we needed the faith of God and the Word of God, that time is right now. The Empowered Life Topical Bible and Devotional is a 365-day scripture mentorship program of life empowerment. There is a promise and a word for every day of the year. I want you to go for free, totally free. Go to our website, jilc.org, and download your copy of the Empowered Life Topical Bible and Devotional. Just because we love you. Thank you for standing with us. Thank you for your support. We're praying for you. We love you. Hallelujah. How many know that we serve the risen King this morning? Can we lift our hands unto God this morning as we praise Him this morning? Hallelujah. Shout and try. Shout and try. 
worship his name, oh God. We send praises into the atmosphere. And we thank you, oh God, for your spirit in this place. Hallelujah. Shout out to God with the voice of triumph. We come to give a praise in this place. We come to worship the king. You are the king of glory. You are the king of glory, oh God. We worship you, king. on an empty grave we dance on an empty grave he has overcome he has overcome we dance on an empty grave we dance on an empty grave he has overcome he has overcome so we dance we Begin to worship him in your own way. We lift our hands to you, O oh Father, and we worship you, O oh God, and we thank you for what you're doing in this place, and we thank you for a mighty downpouring of your power, and we thank you, O oh God, for your glory. Come on and give a praise this morning. You need to give him more than what you're giving him. Come on and shout out to God with the voice of triumph. Come on and lift your hands. Come on and clap your hands. We come to give the King glory this morning. Shout in 
triumph. Jesus is alive. Shout, O Zion, shout in triumph. Death is now alive. Shout, O Zion, shout in triumph. Jesus is alive. Oh, Jesus is alive. Yeah, Jesus is alive. One more time. Jesus is alive. If you know he's alive, somebody shout out to God with the voice of triumph. Because he lives, I can live today. Because he lives, you woke up this morning. Because he lives, you have everything that you need. Because he lives, you continue to give him glory. He's going to break out in his place. Come on and shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Hallelujah.
Everyone lift your hands right now. Hallelujah. These are your antennas. We thank you and we welcome the Holy Spirit of the living God. We welcome you, Holy Ghost, because this is your hour. This is the hour for the church, and we just welcome you to this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Feel the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ here today, and we cannot deny it. You may be seated. But stay in the Holy Ghost. You know, sometimes in a tent meeting, we get distracted with so many things because people are moving around and we're so busy with things. But we're here for one reason and one reason only. That's to lift up the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men to myself. So he's drawing you here under this tent. God is a good God. And he loves you today. So we welcome, in behalf of Pastor Kevin and First Lady Olga, we welcome you to the Jesus' Lord Tent Meeting. My, 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 this has been such a great, great week and a half. Evangelist Deborah George is going to come and share in a few minutes, but I just wanted to welcome you because I believe in so much unity and that's going to be the last revival for the church, is when the church comes together in one mind and one accord. But Satan has tried his best to divide the church and trying to divide the church by doing this pandemic and the whole world is being affected by it. I had the virus myself, but I'm here tonight. You went through things and you're here tonight. How many have been sick, but you're here? Hallelujah, you've been saved and you give glory to God. Hallelujah to Jesus. But I'm not the preacher today. Whoa. I could do it too. I'll be 75, but I still, I got my second breath. Glory to God. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. You're no respecter of person. Glory, 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 glory. Give it to him. Glory. So we welcome you. You know, in the Old Testament, they had a tent, a tabernacle, a tent of meeting. And the tribes used to camp around the whole thing because they knew that the Holy of Holies was right in the center. And then there was a glory cloud that came over the tent and the tabernacle. And the Lord is picking this tent and this tabernacle to set his glory cloud. And when the glory of God enters into the tabernacle, your life will never be the same. Hallelujah to Jesus. We give you glory and honor, God. Let your glory fill this tabernacle. Let your glory fill us tonight. Glory, 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 glory. Somebody touch me. All right, sit down. Okay. I had the virus, so I'm here. Pandemic all over the world. Riots all over the world. But I, I have news for you today. Fear is a liar. There used to be a song, Fear is a Liar. The devil's trying to paralyze the church, but I got news for the devil today. The gates of hell shall not prevail against this church. Hallelujah. But you have to draw a line in the sand tonight. Say, no fear is going to stop me from serving God. No fear is going to prevent me from worshiping God. No fear is going to stop my family from coming into the kingdom of God. Hallelujah to Jesus. Got to draw a line, church, because if it's not this, it's going to be something else that the devil will try to paralyze you. Sit down. Unity. That's one thing the devil cannot fight against. He might try to get one of us, but he's not going to get all of us. Hallelujah. Black, white, Hispanic. Male, female, one voice and one sound in one spirit. Let me hear you. Don't keep going. See, the 
church wants a play church, but we're a church to go one step ahead. Hallelujah. One step forward. Go ahead. Praise him. Praise him in the good times. Praise him in the bad times. Praise him. Visitation! Visitation! Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The preacher's going to be coming. You ready? You ready? You ready? You ready? You ready? Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. But first, let's welcome Sister Deborah Joy. She's going to share everything that's been going on on the street. And you're going to share what happened with that lady with the daughter. Thank you, Pastor Liz. Thank you, Pastor Kevin. And First Lady Olga, we love you so much. Give them a big hand clap. We have been having an amazing time on the streets. You can be seated. Let me just give you a couple of great reports because I know Pastor Kevin is bringing the word today. We have prayed for... 470 people this week in your great city. I better say that again. We prayed for 470 people in your great city this week. But that's not all. We've seen 350 people come out of darkness into the glorious light of the gospel of Jesus Christ this week. And if you have been out on the streets with us, I want you to wave at me. I want you to run up here real quick. Come on, start running. Run up here real quick. Come stand right here and look at everybody. If you've been on the streets with us this week, come on out. Come on down. Look at everybody. Look at everyone. Because I want you to know these are God's heroes. Come on, Amaya. You're part of this. These are God's heroes. Come on, Cassandra. She's part of this. You're part of this. Come on. You're part of this. We love Cassandra. Let her stand right between y'all. There you go. You know why? because Cassandra gave her heart and life to Jesus Christ this week. You want to know why? Here's I dream. You want to know what she wanted today when we saw her on the streets? She said, I want to be water baptized. That's what she said. And someone said, do they have a baptistry? I said, whatever it takes, we'll get her water baptized today. Whatever it takes. And then there's Amaya. Isn't she beautiful? Give Amaya a big hand clap. We love you. Welcome to the family. I said, welcome to the family. Then what can I say about Peter? Oh, my God, he's got a praying mama. I said he has a praying mother, and we ran across him this week. He was here Thursday night, Friday night, and he's back this morning. Welcome him into the family of God. We love you, honey. We love you. We love you. We're going out every day at 12 noon. We're going out every night. We might tweak the time a little bit. We'll let you know later. But you're welcome to come. What are y'all doing, Deborah? Handing out candy bags. Praying for people. 
Yesterday we served them fried chicken. And they came back for seconds. Come on, you were with us. They came back for seconds. Somebody better give God a shout. Because it's all about love God, love people. And Jesus is Lord Church, loves people. I have one quick story. And then I'm going to sit down. But I want the team up here. Because you were, come stand with me. You were a part of that the other night. Where's, where's uh, Elder Dorothy? Right, come here. Y'all were a part of that the other night. We're doing an outreach. We have our table set up. A couple pulls up in a truck. They're very distraught. They're missing their daughter. We prayed that they would find their daughter. And then we sent them to an area where we thought she may be. Whenever the parents pulled up, their daughter had overdosed on heroin, had been beaten up badly and bleeding, laying on the side of the highway. But 911 pulled up, thank God for the medical profession, and they put that beautiful girl in the ambulance, and mama and daddy found their daughter in a matter of five minutes. I don't know who I'm sent to today, but your prayers are being answered. It's acceleration season. Your answers are coming quicker, harder, faster, sooner. Get your hand up. In Texas, we say get your glove up because, you know, we won the World Series, though they cheated. But get your glove up, catch this. Your greatest mission is to see your own family come to know Jesus Christ. Bring your family into this great tent this week. Bring them here. Bring your husbands, your wives. Bring your exes. Remember that old song? All my exes come from Texas. Well, I don't know where they come from. But bring your friends. Bring your family. Bring your sons. Bring your daughters. Bring your grandchildren. It doesn't matter. Bring your friends and your enemies, too, into the house of God. Father, we pray for families today. Save our loved ones. Deliver them. Set them free. Bring them to you, my Father, and bring them into the great house of God. I want to say thank you to this amazing team. I want to say thank you to all of you, the beautiful church family. You're welcome to come out with us every day and every night, and we love you. Thank you. We love you. We applaud you. Or up the streets. You tore it up, girl. Hallelujah. We worship you, King Jesus. Hey. If you Hallelujah. know there's nobody yeah. like our God, I need someone to shout to God this morning. Hey. If you know there's nobody like our living God, I need you to shout out to God.
shout unto God with the voice of triumph. I know this may be a little new to you, but I need you to praise him. Let you know that he's a miracle working God. That he's a saving God. That he's everything that you need. I need you to give him glory this morning because he's everything you need. Hallelujah. Say to nobody like our God. Searched all over. I couldn't find nobody. Say there's nobody like our God. Nobody like our God. Nobody like our God. Nobody like our God. Say nobody like him. Nobody like him. Nobody like him. Nobody like you. Nobody like Nobody like you. Nobody like you. Nobody like you. Is anybody know? There's no one like our God. I need you to praise him. I need you to stand on your feet. Because there's nobody. No one that can save you. No one that can heal you. Better than our God. Nobody like you. 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 I said there's no one. I said there's no one. I said there's no one. There's no one that can hold you. No one can save you. Nobody like 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 you. Say there's no one like our God. Give a praise. Give a praise. Give a praise. Give a praise. Because he's worthy. And because he lives, I can stand here today. Because Jesus lives, you can sit here today. Because he lives, you have food on your table. Because he lives, you have a car to drive. Because he lives, you have clothes on your back. I need you to praise him like he's giving you everything. Somebody give him glory in this place. Because he lives, I can breathe in here. Because he lives, I can breathe in here. Because he lives, we fear nothing. 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 Come on and shout. Come on and shout. Come on and shout. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Into his courts with praise. There's a miracle in this room with my name on it. There's a healing in this room, and it's here for me. Oh, there's a breakthrough in this room. It's got my name on it. There's a 
Somebody praise him right now. I said, somebody owes God a praise right now. If it had not been for the Lord who was on your side, where would you be today? Open up your mouth and praise him right now. The Bible says clap your hands. You're not clapping your hands. You're looking at me. Clap your hands. The Bible says unto God, now shout with a voice of triumph. Shout. I feel an anointing right here for miracles. Shout if you're ready for a miracle. Shout if you're desperate for a breakthrough. Raise your voice and shout for what's coming. Shout for what God's about to release over your life today. Somebody give God a praise today. Miracles are about to happen. Breakthroughs are about to be released. Somebody give God a crazy shout, a crazy praise. I can care less what you think about me kind of praise. Some of you just still playing games. I want somebody that's radical enough to jump out of your chair, shout, praise, sing, scream, dance. Spit. Get out of your chair and praise him. Get out of your chair. We're talking about God. We're talking about our Savior. We're talking about the one that shed his blood. We're talking about the one that sent his son. We're talking about the one that broke every curse. Open up your mouth and shout. You're not shouting. See, you can't receive what I'm saying unless you open your mouth. Of course, your miracle is voice activated. I said your miracle is voice activated. Lift your hands and shout in your house. Shout driving down the road watching me on Facebook. Somebody give God a shout that paralyzes every power, every principality. Somebody shout. Liz, come here. Testify. Come on. Tell us what God did for you. Come on up quickly. We're going to hear about a miracle that her, her mother received. What happened? Uh, my mother was very sick and um, she couldn't get out of bed for like four days and uh, God healed her. <laughs> Somebody shout, we found the cure to COVID-19. His name is Jesus. You heard my mother. Where's Daryl? Get Daryl out here. I'm going to wait till he comes out here. He better run like he's running to go fishing. We got to be more excited about Jesus than anything else in this world. We got to be more excited and testify about what God is doing. Let the whole world hear that our God is not dead. He is alive. I wish I had a pastor that would scream. I wish I had a preacher that would shout. Jesus has not changed. He is still working miracles. Somebody shout hallelujah. How many of you are a miracle? How many of you are a miracle? Tell somebody you're sitting next to a miracle. Slap somebody a high five and say, you're a miracle, baby. You should have died overdosed. You should have lost your mind. You should have died of a broken heart. Come on up here, Daryl. Jump up here like you're excited about Jesus. Uh, basically, my mother, she, was, uh, she had the coronavirus, and she was in the hospital pretty much on her deathbed. And pastor called up, and he prayed for her. And today, my mom no longer has the virus, and she's like... Somebody shout like you're ready for a move of God in America! See, you want to play church. That's why you're not bringing people. See, you want to go through the routine of religion. I want to see souls saved. I want to see blinded eyes open. I want to see deaf ears unstuck. John 3. Shut it down. You're not ready. John 3. Turn me down a little bit. John 3. Stand on your feet. Read along with somebody. Good to see Alonzo. You ready? The family back here today. We love you guys so much. Love you so much. Praying for you day, night, and day, day, and night. Every one of you that are here, raise your hand if you're glad you're alive. You're glad. How many of you know that God has called you and I into the kingdom for this moment? Hallelujah. Praise the living God. Come here, Benita. Run quick. Ushers, where are you? I need my pastors close to the front. You can't help me out in the standing on the grass. Lift your hands. When I lay hands on you, there's a miracle working, anointing. 
coming on you right now. Where are my preachers? Where are the pastors of this church? Where are the elders? Lift your hands and pray in the Holy Ghost. Every believer, pray in the Holy Ghost. You want to play church? We can do that in the building. We're out here in the open air to let the whole world know that Jesus is the Savior. And the only hope for America is God's Son, Jesus Christ. For God did not come into the world and send His Son to condemn the world, but He sent the word Jesus that the world through Him might be saved. Shout if you're ready for a move of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That ain't going to do it. We got to get desperate. Radical actions produce miracle results. Desperate people still do desperate things. Shout if you're desperate for every one of your family members to be saved, set free, and on fire by the Holy Ghost. Shout. Go ahead. Keep shouting. Go ahead. Keep shouting. Right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. Keep shouting. Keep shouting. Shout there in your car. Shout right there wherever you are. Shout right there on Facebook. God's about to save your family. Praise them in advance. Praise them in advance. We believe there's a miracle in this room. Then raise your hands and praise them for it. You need a miracle, jump up and give them one more shout of praise. John chapter 3, we want to welcome you today. For those of you that do not know me, I am Bishop T.D. Jakes. We welcome every one of you on Facebook. Those of you watching us online, I promise you this today as I feel this anointing on me. That the way you begun this broadcast when we started, something supernatural is about to divinely reverse by the time our time together comes to a close. And there is a miracle. I need everybody under the tent. Pick up your phone. Don't tell me you're on fire for God or you don't like reaching people for Jesus. Something wrong with that. The team went out yesterday. People were safe, set free. Get out your phone. Share it on Facebook. Everybody now obey the prophet. I'm telling you there are miracles on the way. And I want to help somebody receive a miracle from God. How do I do that? By sharing our videos. Sharing the broadcast. I want to see Long Island set on fire for God. I said, I want to see Long Island set on fire for Jesus. I said, I want to see your family set on fire for Jesus. John chapter 3, this is the day the Lord has made. Somebody rejoice and be glad. That was three people that would be good if we were the Mormon choir or we had the opera, but we're under the tent in revival. Shout if you're glad you're alive. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son that who, everyone who believes or whosoever shall believe on him would not perish. Everybody shout, will not perish. Everybody shout, my family will not perish, but will have eternal life. The Bible tells us you may be seated today but not fall asleep. We understand that we know how much God loves us. And we have put our trust in his love. Turn me down a little bit. God is love. And all who live in him, God lives in them. And as we live in God, our love grows more perfect. And we are not afraid in the hour and the time that we're living in. We are not moved or disturbed by current events. Because we know the author of the word of God. We know God, the creator of all things. And Jesus told us that in this world, in the last days, there will be times of distress, persecution, and tribulation. But Jesus said, be of good cheer because I've already overcome the world for you. As we live in God, our love grows more perfect. So we will not be afraid on the day of judgment. That we can face him with confidence because we live like Jesus here in this world. I don't know about you, I want to bring Jesus to a lost and dying, unregenerated world. There's no greater desire, there's no greater fire or fervor in my heart than to see souls saved and swept into the kingdom of God. There are a lot of you that message me on social media like Jennifer and others, and you have a great heart for souls, and you say, Pastor, I want to see souls saved, then why aren't you out here during the week winning souls? Tomorrow we're going to be out here 12 noon winning souls. Thomas Johnson, I know you have a heart for souls. I have a heart for souls. My brother, my wife, my mother, the leadership, we have a heart for souls. 
We want to see people saved and set free by the power of God. But the Bible says they cannot hear unless somebody goes and preaches the word to them. Can you say amen? Lift your hands and shout, souls and more souls will be saved. In 1 John chapter 4, I'm talking today from the subject, the color of love. Everybody say the color of love. Love is not white and love is not black. Love is red. God sent his son to die on the cross for the sins of the world. When God looks at us, he doesn't see color. He doesn't see creed, culture, nationality. He sees the blood of his son. Are you covered by the blood of the lamb today? Have you been washed in the cleansing blood that flows from Calvary? Somebody shout, I'm covered by the blood. But do you know how many people that come under a tent and shout and sing, but have not been set free from the power of sin? There are people watching me every single service from all over the world, but yet have not accepted the free gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ. First John chapter 4, I'm going to take my time today. If the word of God bores you, you can leave. First John 4, I didn't come with three points in a poem. I came with a word from heaven for your life. Everybody shout the color of love. If someone says, I love God, 1 John 4, 16 to 21, but hates a fellow believer, that person is a liar. For if we don't love people we can see, how can we love God whom we cannot see? And he has given us this command, those who love God must also love fellow believers. Somebody shout, the color of love. God loves you so much that he sent his son Jesus on a mission. And it was not just an ordinary mission. It was a mission of love with a message of love. Everybody shout a mission of love with a message of love. The Bible doesn't say that God has love. The Bible says that God is love. Everybody shout God is love. God is love. So if you know God, you love everybody. I'm tired of hearing people saying, this is my black friend or this is my white friend. We should just have friends. Because everybody, no matter what color of your skin, is somebody to Jesus. I, mean, I want you to hear me today. I don't care what side of the tracks you were born on. It doesn't matter the level of your education. You may be intelligent and you may be illiterate. That means nothing to God. The thing that matters to God is that if you embrace the sacrifice and the free gift, then God sending his son to die on a cross to shed his blood, that you and I might be, have life and have it more abundant. I'm telling you today, the devil is in trouble. And he who steals will steal no more. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life. Shall life. Jump up and shall life. If you're full of life, shout out life, life, life. Love is the very essence and the nature of God. Everybody lift your hands and shout, God is love. God, the creator of the universe created the planet, the galaxies, and its orbit. God created the whole human race. Then he created you and I because of one reason. He loves you. The Bible tells us in Romans 5 and 8 that God demonstrated his own love toward us, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Even while we were sinners, God sent his son, knowing that in the wings of time that you and I would need a savior. When we were bound by sin. The reason you and I are alive today is because God created us as an object of his love. I want you to raise your hands and shout, I'm loved by God. Everybody shout it out loud as you can at home. I'm loved by God. Somebody shout, I love God and he loves me. And he is responsible for me. Say that, God loves me, I love him, and he is responsible for me. That's why your heart is beating right now. That's why you're able to take the breath, Elena, that you take when you sing. We must never take moments like this for granted. I don't stand up and preach. I never take a moment or an opportunity or a platform that God allows me to grace and take it lightly because somebody is standing between hell and somebody is standing between eternity. And it's up to preachers of the gospel to stand up and push back the power of darkness that the kingdom of God can be increased and advanced on the earth. Everybody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Tell somebody I'm alive for a purpose. I'm breathing for a purpose. Oh, hallelujah. I didn't die from the virus for a purpose. You didn't die from addiction because God had a purpose and God has a plan for every one of your lives. Everybody lift your voice and shout, God loves me. When Jesus stretched out his arms on Calvary, wide on the cross, he stretched out his arms and he says, I love people this much. And he says that I'll die for you and I'll die for you because I don't want to live without you. Somebody shout hallelujah. God's love is eternal. God's love, hallelujah, is unconditional. And God's love is immeasurable. God's love surpasses all human knowledge. And it is difficult for any of us under this tent and those that are watching me online to be able to fully, I don't care how much education you have, I don't care how long you've been in church, you may be a fifth generation preacher, it is hard for us to fully grasp and understand the true level and the nature of God's love. The Bible says says this, the Bible says that we, we, it is hard for us to comprehend and grasp the width and the length, the height and the depth of God's love for us. And 1 John 4, 7 and 8, beloved, let us love one another. Tell somebody, I love you. Tell somebody else, I love you. The word hate should never flow out of a Christian's mouth. God don't have prejudiced kids. God don't have racist children. When somebody tells me they love God, but they hate somebody based on the color of their skin, they have never experienced the genuineness of God's power and of God's love. I'm here to preach the word of God whether you like it or not. Today I'm telling you the power of God is under this tent and God is going to break all fear off you and perfect love drives out all fear. Lift your hands and shout praise the Lord. I said, shout praise the Lord. Let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God. Say it with me. He that loveth not, knoweth not God. For God has love. No. For God is love. Everybody say, God is love. Then we have the commandment of Jesus where it says in Matthew 22, 37 through 40, everybody should have a Bible out. If you come under the tent, bring a Bible or pull it up on your phone. This is not a lecture. This is a life-changing encounter. Matthew 22, those in ministry, get out a Bible for I go get you one. Matthew 22, 37 through 40, Jesus replied. Somebody said, I have it on my phone. That's perfect. Good. You must love the Lord your God with all your soul, with all your heart, with all your mind. For this is the first and greatest commandment. So the question I pose to you first, do you love God today? No, I'm not talking about lip service. Do you love him with all your heart? With all your soul? Truth don't offend you. Pastor hasn't offended you. The gospel should not offend you. It should transform you. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, for this is the greatest commandment. And second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. See, people love themselves more than anybody else. The Bible says, no man yet hateth his own flesh or his own belly. We need to understand something, that we are to love God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our strength. There are people that are around me right now in ministry. I'm watching them very closely. Because you can't say you love God and you're a racist. 
You can't say you love God and you don't like ministering to those that are hurting. You can't say you love God and you don't come out to a prayer meeting and pray for souls that are headed for hell. You can't say you love God and you're not out evangelizing, telling a lost and dying world about the love of Jesus. Don't you tell me you've experienced deliverance from the eternal flames of hell and you've not shared your love that Jesus has dropped in your spirit with a lost and dying world. The Bible says, love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. God's love is constantly trying to block man's route from destruction. God's love is continually trying to block man's route from destruction. The scripture tells us that our first love is always for God. My first love is not for my wife. Love her with all my heart. Your love should not be for anything else more than God. Somebody said, Pastor, what is an idol? In the word of God, the Bible tells us anything that we give all, any uh, more affection or attention to more than God. I want, I want to say that again. An idol is anything that we give our affection or attention to more than God. In America, we have turned education into another God. Some have turned family into another God. Absolutely right. Anything that get you give your attention or affection to more than, everybody shout, more than God. I want you to hear me clearly. More than God is an idol. Are you saying I shouldn't love my, my wife? Or my, absolutely not. Should I, you should love your kids more than anything else in this world besides God. We ought to love God with every fiber of our being. And I know today there's only about half of the people under this tent after much prayer, after much seeking God that love the Lord with every fiber of their being. Because when people are challenged that love God, they are not, they are not offended. They are motivated to do more for God. And that's why the tent is up. And that's why we're preaching the way we preach. And that's why we're going out on the streets. Because there is a world that is lost, living in darkness, that has never come to the love of Jesus. When you truly love somebody, you want to please them by how you behave and by the way you act. How you treat somebody really reveals how much or the level of your care or concern about them. When Christ's love fills our hearts, you're no longer selfish. Let me say that again. When Christ's love fills our hearts, we're no longer selfish individuals anymore. Today I want you to remember one thing. God loves you. And there's nothing that can ever separate you from the love of God. But do you know there are things in our lives, if we allow them to, that can stand between us and an on fire walk with God? Are you hearing me today? I don't care what color your skin is. I don't care what your background is. Doesn't matter what language you speak, God loves you. Tell somebody, nothing can separate you from God's love. God's love is unchangeable. God's love is unchangeable. He knows exactly where we are and loves us anyway. He doesn't love your sin. He loves you. He doesn't love your homosexual lifestyle. He loves you. God is not pleased with those that claim to be Christian and are pro-abortion. I'm going to talk about it today. I'll keep you here till tonight if I have to, to get this message through and into your spirit. God is a God of love. He's not a God of death. God has a great plan for my life. God has a great plan for your life. And some of you, most of your life, the enemy has used your past to plague you with fear and condemnation. But the Bible tells us there is no condemnation to those that are in Christ. Watch this now. People shout before they hear the whole verse. Who walk not after the flesh or the dictates thereof, but after the Spirit. 
So there is no condemnation today to those that love God. There is, no, there is condemnation for those that refuse to surrender their will to God's divine plan and purpose. But when you surrender and you give your heart to Jesus Christ, he lifts off of you the condemnation, the pain, the guilt, the shame of the past. And you're now free because of the love of Jesus. If you're free, jump up and shout, I am free. Shout, I'm free all over the tent. God has a phenomenal plan for all of us, Amen. for your family. I don't want to just shout. I want you to understand what I'm saying today. I want you to hear the word of God clearly. I want you to understand exactly what the message is today. 1 John 4 tells us what real love is. Not that we love God, but that he loved us. And he sent his son as a sacrifice for all of our sins. Real love is not just your love for God. It's God's love for you. Are you hearing me? In the Bible, the book of John was written by the disciple John. What's interesting is, as I was studying this, he never referred to himself as John. When he talked about himself... Instead of using his own natural name, he said the disciple whom Jesus loved. Everybody say the disciple whom Jesus loved. Everybody say that together. Do not be distracted. Pay attention. Because there's a lot of people that have been in church their whole lives, Miss Deborah, Jackie, and they've never truly experienced the genuine love of Jesus. But John... In the book of John, the disciple whom Jesus loved, and in John 13, he wrote the disciple whom Jesus loved was sitting next to Jesus. He could have just written John was sitting next to Jesus, but when Matthew, Matthew, Mark, Luke wrote their books, their accounts of the gospel, they referred to themselves using their own name. Could you imagine that if you would have read John's account, they would have thought, well, who, John, who does John really think he is? Why doesn't he just call himself by his own name? But the Bible says that John described himself as the one Jesus loved. Jesus, as we know, loves everybody. Everybody is significant to Jesus. That's why I don't like some of these movements when they just prioritize a certain people. It's not about white power. It's not about black power. It's not about Latin power. It's not about Asian power. It's about God's abundant power and love in sending his son to die on a cross to shed his blood. I wish somebody would shout hallelujah. And some of you that claim to be spiritual, if any movement is motivated or empowered by hate, it is not of God. It is of the devil. Four times in the word of God, he refer referred to himself as the disciple whom Jesus loved. I want you to everybody shout, I am a disciple that Jesus loves. Say it out loud, I am a disciple that Jesus loves. But in chapter 19, he wrote it again. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciples whom Jesus loved. Do you know the Bible tells us in Ecclesiastes... There is a time and a season for everything. Everybody say there's a time, a season, and a purpose for all things. The Bible tells us in Ecclesiastes 3 that there is a time to love. And the Bible also says there's a time to hate. Everybody say a time to love and a time to hate. I want to remind everybody that's watching on social media and those under this tent, I want to remind you today, this morning, that we're called to love what God loves, and we're called to hate what God hates. God hates disunity. God hates bitterness. God hates lust addiction. Anything that brings destruction in the life of somebody, God hates are you hearing me today? Lift your hand and shout, there's a time to love and there's a time to hate. Oh, hallelujah. We are called as people of God, as believers, 
to love what God loves and to hate what God hates. People, you can't tell me that you love God and you hate somebody. You can't tell me that after all God has forgiven you of and you can't forgive somebody that brought hurt and pain into your life. The problem is you've never had a revelation of the love of God because if God was able to forgive you and love you through all the hell and mess that he brought you out of, who are you, who are you to hold any unforgiveness towards somebody that brought pain into your life? Somebody shout hallelujah. Tell somebody it's time to love what God loves and hate what God hates. We're not to hate people, period. God has called us to save people, not to destroy people with painful words. Christians are called by God to love what God loves, but to hate what God hates. And believers in the body of Christ are good at loving what God loves. I know most Christians that I know, they're very good at loving what God loves. But most of the church world are very weak at learning to hate what God hates. Are you hearing me today? I came with a word of power and revelation today. Many have a weakness when it comes to hating what is unholy. You know, it was General Booth, the founder of the Salvation Army. He said a long time ago, many years ago before he died, he said, I fear the day when we will have salvation without regeneration. We will have faith without repentance. We will have heaven without hell. We'll have love for God without hate for evil. Let me say that again. We'll have love for God without hate for evil. This is what General Booth said, the founder of the Salvation Army. I'm going to say it again. We'll have a love for God without a hate for evil. And I believe in the modern church now in America that we are here right now and we're entering a critical time and a period before the coming of the Lord. I'm telling you right now, many people say well I love God with all my heart and I believe you do. But when you love God, you hate what God hates and you learn in prayer to push back the power of darkness that is bringing pain and heartache to humanity. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Shout with all your might right now. There's a lot of people say they love God, but many say they love God doesn't mean that they do love God. They love When you love God, you love what God loves. Everybody say love what God loves, hate what God hates. How many of you want to finish the race? Raise your hand in the back of the tent. You want to finish the race. Then you've got to learn to love what God loves and hate what God hates. When you love what God loves, you're not sleeping around anymore. You're not in premarital sex with people outside of covenant. When you love what God loves, you're not a fornicator. You're not an adulterer. I know people are starting to look around getting uncomfortable. That's how I know I'm stepping on the right nerve. You need to understand when you love God, you love him with all your heart. Do you know there are some couples here today that are not married? They wouldn't even come to church unless their girlfriend came to church or their boyfriend came to church. But I'm here to tell you today, God is looking for a people in this last day that will love him with all their heart. Am I preaching to you? Are you a lover of God? Are you a lover of truth? Are you a lover of the gospel of Jesus Christ? Shout hallelujah. Somebody say, well, pastor, I love God. Let me tell you something. You can't say you love flowers and love weeds. Of course, weeds will grow and choke and destroy the flowers. You got to deal with the weeds so the flowers can live. That's what I'm doing today. I'm dealing with the weeds so the flowers can flourish and be all that God has called and created you to be. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. You cannot love God without hating, what's, you, without hating what Satan does in the lives of people. I'm going slow today. You cannot say you love God with all your heart without hating what the devil's doing in America. The Bible says the thief does three things. He steals, he kills, and destroys. An abortion is not a Republican or a Democrat thing. It's a demonic thing. How can you say you love life and you force somebody that takes life?
You vote for whoever you want to vote for. But it always should be biblical. Are you hearing me today? Lift your hands and shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is love. Say with me, God is love. love. Well, pastor, this is very simple. Just chill out. I'm going somewhere. God has called you to love your enemies and to love those that hate you. How many of you love those that hate you? I doubt it. How many of you love those that seek to destroy you? I doubt it. How many of you bless those that have used you and abused you? Many of you, I doubt it. You can lift your hand all you want. I'm not convinced. Because you'd be out here praying with us on Monday night, praying for their souls, praying that they'd come back to an on-fire, vibrant walk with God. Let me tell you something. I want to save you a lot of time. Lukewarm people will not make it in the next six months. You're either on fire for God or you're on fire in sin for the devil. You cannot serve God and serve mammon. You cannot serve God and serve your fleshly desire. I'm telling you right now, those of us that will put God first in this season, you should be jumping off the top of your chair. God said, I will add everything you desire and you will not lack anything if you love him with all your heart. God said, love your enemies. Tell somebody next to you, love your enemies. You know, Jesus called Judas his friend. He said, do what you got to do, Judas, my friend. Do it quickly. He knew he was going to betray him for 30 pieces of silver. But Jesus looked at him and said, what you do, do quickly, my friend. That's the love we can't comprehend. Called Judas his friend, the man that would betray him. That's the love of God. The Bible also speaks of things that the Lord hates, that we are to hate. Everybody say we got to hate what God hates. How many of you want to be blessed in your Christian life before you see the Lord? Learn to love what he loves. Hate what God hates. Psalm 97 and 10, those that love the Lord hate evil. Say that with me, those that love the Lord. I'm going to give you a basic Bible today. And on Thursday nights, we're going back to the Bible under the tent. Back to the Bible every Thursday night. Miracles are going to break loose. Souls are going to be saved. If you'll help me and stop fighting me. If you'll cooperate and get in alignment with the vision of this ministry, your children will be set on fire before it's too late for God. Hate what God hates. Love what God loves. Don't play with sin. Don't be entertained by sin. God can't deliver you from what you entertain. You that love the Lord hate evil. Learning to hate wrong things is important to love right things. I'm going to read some scriptures now. How many of you love the Bible? You love the Bible more than anything in this world. Then you're not bored. Psalm 101.3, I will set no unclean thing before my eyes, for I hate those who turn aside. Don't turn your eyes aside to that which is unclean, because God hates that. Psalm 119.104, I hate every false way. I hate people who offer false ways to heaven, the psalmist said. Psalm 119, I hate vain thoughts. God says I hate it when you let your mind dwell on things that it shouldn't dwell on. I hate vain thoughts. Psalm 119 says, verse 163, I hate lying. God says I hate it. I hate when people lie. I hate it when people are dishonest. I'm preaching the true gospel today. I hate it when people don't tell the truth. And say what needs to be said. Come on, somebody. The scripture tells us this. 
that we are to hate what God hates and love what God loves. We need to understand for too long, so many people have been calling the wrong things right, and now they think that that is now right. Some of you have been doing the wrong thing for so long, the wrong thing to you now seems right. But the Bible tells us there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof ends in destruction. We got to love what God loves. I want some intercessors to shout. I want some Holy Ghost faith people to shout. I will love what God loves. Say, Pastor, what are you doing today? I came to tell you the truth. Of course, the Bible says you speak the truth in love. Truth will set you free. Pastor Kevin, this, this really offends me. No, no, you're mistaken. You're confused between a conviction and being offended. You're confused. Truth, the word of God should never offend you if you're Christian, if you're full of faith and love with God. I'm offended. No, you're convicted. When people are convicted, they'll turn on you like a rabid pit bull and bite you. You got to watch when you feed certain Christians. You give them the truth, you rebuke them, you correct them in love. Better watch your hand, they'll bite you. Because non spiritual people, carnal people, take correction as rejection. But those that are spiritual, they take correction, they take truth, and they see it as a challenge. I wish somebody would shout over here and go to another level because they want to be all that God created them to be. I'm moving quickly now. Zechariah 8, 17, for I hate false oaths. I hate false accusations. One translation said, I hate it when you falsely accuse people. Perhaps the most famous verse of the Old Testament about what God hates is Proverbs 6, 16. There are six things that the Lord hates. Do you know that, Sister Luz? Six things that the Lord hates. Corinne, do you know what they are? There are six things God says I detest, I hate. Today you're learning. I hate these six things. I'm in Proverbs 6, verse 16. These are the six things the Lord hates. Seems like a strong word, hate. Six things the Lord says I hate, and seven are abomination unto him. And he said, here it is. Are you ready? Are you ready out there? All the men, are you ready? Let me hear the men shout, not ladies. <laughs> men, stand up. I want to make sure I'm preaching. To, I want to see the men. You don't know today. They may be this or that, transgender. All the men. Everybody shout, I want truth. All the ladies stand up and shout, I want truth. He said, this is what I hate, a proud look, a lying tongue. I would never look a man or a woman of God in the face and lie to them. The other day I was talking to somebody that I love with all my heart, and I asked them a question. When I asked them the question, they lied to me. And the Holy Spirit said, they just lied to your face. See, when people are in sin, they try to cover it. Do you understand what the Bible says about covering sin? I want somebody to tell me what the Bible says about covering sin. The Bible says, he that covereth his sin shall not prosper. So people sometimes are not prospering is because they're covering sin that God says, I love you so much. I just want you to humble yourself. I want you to repent of your sin, and I'll treat it like it never happened. I'll cast it to the bottom of the sea, never to remember it again. This is what he said, I hate, a proud look, a lying tongue, a proud look. When you look down on other people, when you humiliate people, when you act like you're holier than thou. And better than everybody else in the church. I know a lot of people like this. 
When you're guilty of some of these same things that you attack others over and you don't speak in love to them, but you speak in judgment to them. There's a big difference. I hate a proud look, God said. I hate it, God said. Everybody shout, God said, I hate it. That pride can get you such a hold of your heart. And the Bible tells us that God gives grace to the humble. But the proud, the Bible says, God will resist the proud. What does that mean? God will hold you at arm's length if you're proud, if you're full of hatred if you're arrogant, if you don't walk in love towards your brother. God said, that's a spirit of pride, and I resist the pride, but I give grace to the humble. How many of you want grace? How many of you want grace? How many of you want to live in, under God's mercy and grace? Stand on your feet and shout, Lord, I need your grace. I need your mercy. Lord, I love you with all my heart, with all my mind. God don't bless proud, arrogant people. God don't bless liars. We got to get back to the Bible in America. We got to get back behind pulpits and preach with power. You know how many homosexuals are preaching today? You know how many preachers, I don't even want to call them preachers, I want to call them pitiful. They preach one thing, but they live another. They preach about the life of Jesus, but they're pro-abortion. It's a disgrace and it's an abomination in the eyes of God. I said it's a dehoshabarakarabosirabahaya. It is a disgrace and an abomination in the eyes of God. God said, watch your mouth. I despise a lying tongue. I hate hands that shed innocent blood. The more we fear and love God, the more we hate evil. The more we fear and love God, the more we hate all evil. God never called you to hate people. We hate sin. We love people. God does not want to judge anybody. But when you refuse to repent, the only last resort is judgment. Well, if God is so loving, why does he allow people to go to hell? He doesn't. We send ourselves when we reject God's ultimate plan and intention in salvation. Grace wasn't given for you and I to live any way we want. Does anybody have a problem with this? That's not grace, Reverend Rosa, to say I love God and I don't change. I come to church. But I'm still a drug addict, an alcoholic. Jesus will set you free. And the Bible tells us there is an anointing that will lift every burden and destroy every yoke. Somebody shout hallelujah. We had shirts made. My wife was making the shirts last night, late. Grace ain't greasy, it's bloody. You're not just going to slide into heaven. It's going to require some sacrifice. How many of you have been changed and transformed by the powerful gospel of Jesus Christ? Raise your hands and shout hallelujah. Come on, I, got, I need you for 10 more minutes. Pay attention. When you love God, you don't hate people. You love people. You don't judge people. You pray for people. Dr. Martin Luther King famously said, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. The Lord spoke to me the other day when I was in prayer. And he said this, those who turn away from me, it's not that they didn't love me. It is because they didn't hate evil. I know a lot of people that are no longer in church, and I believe they did love God. But the problem was they never learned to hate evil. When you hate evil, you have nothing to do with the perversion of this world. When you hate evil, you're not pro-abortion. 
When you hate evil, you don't shout in church and shack up when you go home with somebody that you're not in covenant with. I want you to hear me clearly. I'm not, believe me, your face does not move me. I'm taking my time. The Bible says to the prophet, don't even fear the people's faces. The problem is we're more concerned about filling chairs than filling heaven. They love God, but they never learn to hate evil. America and the church... Pay attention now, has lost its moral compass. Let's put aside spirit for a moment. From 1973 until 2020, Mike, some 60 million babies have been killed. 60 million babies have been aborted. God says life is right, murder is wrong. Somebody said, well, pastor, are you a Republican? That's none of your business. It's not about being a Republican or being a Democrat. It's about being a Christian. And when you are a Christian, you are not for killing a baby in its mother's womb. I wish I had some ladies on my left and on my right to stand up and shout a loud hallelujah and amen. We're selling human body parts from children that have been murdered. Sex trafficking, I feel the anointing pushing me, is at an all-time high. God said, I set before you life and death. I set before you the blessing and the curse. I set before you life, death, blessing, curse, heaven, hell. You choose that you and your seed may live. When you say amen, are you willing to change? That's what amen means. When you say I want truth, that means you choose life. When you say this offends me, you have chosen death. But I'm here to tell you today, we are going to choose life. And that life is in Jesus Christ who died on the cross shed his blood that you and I might have eternal life. We got to raise the standard. As Pastor Parsley's preached for years, we got to stop lowering our standards because people that are not spiritual refuse to raise theirs. Pastor Kevin, I love God. I believe in God. That may be true, but so do demons. The Bible says demons believe and tremble. They got more reverence for the Holy Spirit than some so-called Christians that have been in church 39 years. They got more reverence than a lot of believers. The Bible says demons believe and even have a reverence. When I begin to move with the anointing for miracles and I walk in that authority... Demons have no authority in the atmosphere. And I know some of you today that have been in the church a long time, you're, you're right now you're in question with certain things in the world. But let me tell you something. My experiences in life never changed the validity of the Holy Word of God. Doesn't matter what I've been through. It doesn't change what God said about my life. Doesn't matter what you've experienced, it doesn't change what you're expecting. Because your faith is not in man. Your faith is in God. And if you truly believe God is in control, you understand everything you've been through. God knew it before you ever walked through it. Because all things are working together for the good. Raise your hands and shout hallelujah. You have a choice to make today. We have decisions to make this year. Focus now. Don't you let the devil rob one word of this message. We can make all the choices and the decisions we want, but when we begin to redefine the Supreme Court, what they call now and have ruled for same-sex marriage, and what marriage really means, it's time for the church to rise up and speak out. Yeah. They tell us now, Ms. Deborah, 
Same-sex couple want to come in our church. I have to marry them. Over my dead body. I will not marry something that God has called detestable and an abomination. I wish I had a church I could really preach the way I feel this. I'm telling you right now, God has called the church to live holy. God has called the church to be the light in the midst of darkness. We are the light of the world. The city set on a hill. We are the salt of the earth. This is the core of our faith. I'm uncomfortable. Good. I'm doing the right thing. I'm not a bigot. This is the core of our belief system. Preachers have been silent way too long. It's time for the true church to stand up. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? You should get out of your cars and jump on your roof. Where are you? It's time for the church to stand up and speak out concerning their conviction. Everybody shout, now's the time for the true church to arise in power and demonstration. Now lift your hands and pray in the Holy Ghost for 30 seconds. Stand up. You say you got power. Some of you don't have enough power to blow out a candle. Pray in the Holy Ghost. There are three people here today that need miracles. Two have cancer. The other person has a digestive issue. God's going to heal them today by his mighty power. I want to hear the triumphant church arise with power in your voice. Be seated, I'm not done. We can't be silent anymore with babies being torn into pieces. Almost stay on it. Body parts, livers and hearts and kidneys being sold. Little babies being dissected for profit. This is the day we're living in. Now, don't walk out on the Holy Ghost. The Bible tells us about these times, perilous times, shall come. Where we're calling good evil and evil good. Now, you could go to jail for destroying an egg of a bald eagle. Five years. $250,000 fine. But if you destroy the egg or the embryo of an infant baby, now you're open-minded and you're educated. People have become so open-minded that their brains have fallen out of their head. Somebody with a sense of right, you don't even have to be spiritual to know that this is evil and that this is wrong. Same-sex marriage is an abomination to God. Homosexuality, hatred, racism is an abomination to God. History records a remarkable account of the destruction of an ancient city when the watchman was supposed to be on the wall and they had a tremendous responsibility to watch from the top of the wall as danger would approach. If America is destroyed, it will be destroyed because of silence in pulpits and silence in chairs. But I'm telling you right now, there is a new breed of believers that God is raising up that will invade enemy-held territory and cause destruction to the forces of darkness. Are you that generation? Talk to me. Are you that generation? Talk to me. Who's raising the standard? We need to pray like never before. How many of you have unsafe family members? Stand up. You join me tomorrow night. We're going to pray. God's going to save your family this year.
See, De Deborah, I believe that the days of going to church once a week are long over. We are not going to make an impact coming to church when we feel like it. We're not going to change our world or shift our culture if we're conforming to the world. We are not to conform to this world. We are to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. I don't need less of God. I need more of God. If you're going to clap, that means you're going to be here for prayer on Thursday night. Thursday night. How many of you were here Thursday night? We had a great service here Thursday night. People were healed. People were set free. People were delivered. Somebody jump out of your seat and shout, my family will be healed. My family will be saved. My family will be delivered. My son will preach. My daughter will prophesy. My children is going to heaven. Not one of them is going to hell. I close with this. We're called to pray. We're called to love. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from our wicked ways, God said, I'll hear from heaven, I'll forgive their sin, and I'll heal the land. America right now is literally swimming in a sewer of pornography, adultery, immorality, abortion, homosexuality, lying, stealing, cheating, greed, racism is rampant. Somebody shout, we repent. Everybody in the tent, shout, we repent. Everybody in the tent, shout, we repent. Everybody at home, shout, I repent. Oh, you're perfect? Some of you think you've committed so much sin, God can't forgive you. There's not one sin the blood of Jesus cannot cover. Not one sin. The blood of Jesus. God did not set his son to condemn the world, but through his son, the world might be saved. Say this right now, Lord, we repent. Say tonight, today, every day. Lord, I pray, let revival Begin with me. Now shout. Shout. Shout, Lord, let revival begin with me. Awaken me. Stir my heart again. Lord, I thank you. I love you with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength. Somebody shout hallelujah. Preston, why? Does God hate sin so much? True. And because he gave us his only son. It cost him, Julia, his only son. To a people that would mock him, brutally beaten him, that he was unrecognizable. He did it because of love. For God so loved the world. 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 That he gave his only begotten son. Every head bowed, every eye closed under this tent. This is holy ground. Saints in prayer. You may be wrong about a lot of things, as I have been in my life. You never want to be wrong about eternity. You never know when you'll breathe your last. You never know when your last day will be on this planet. Well, the Bible says these things are written in the Word of God that you may know that you have life eternal, that you passed from death unto life. The Bible says, what shall it profit a man with every head bowed and every eye closed? If he gains the whole world, the whole wide world, and loses his own soul. You can have power, prestige, position, fame, fortune, riches. You can have the accolades of men. You can have money in your bank account. You could be a millionaire but broke, spiritually bankrupt without Jesus. 
you're under this tent and you say, Pastor, I want to know for sure that there's not one sin separating me from a holy God. I want to know. I want to know today that every sin is forgiven. There's a lot of people under this tent today that have sin in their life. I know by the Spirit. You could fool me. You could fool a preacher. You could fool a bishop. You could fool a prophet. But you can't fool God. Say, Pastor, today there's something in my life that I need to surrender fully to God's divine plan and purpose. I want to be delivered by his power. I want to be delivered by his power. If that's you, you say, Pastor, I want to be forgiven. There's sin in my life. I want to repent. I want to be restored to an on-fire walk with God. I want to be delivered. I want to be set free. Lift your hand right now. Lift it up high. Lift it up high. Don't you let pride keep your hand down. Don't you let pride or what people think about you, the expectation of people to cause you to keep your hand down. Hold it all the way up. Hold that hand all the way up and say, I need your prayer, Pastor. I need your prayer. I need your prayer. I need your prayer. I want you to pray for me. I want you to agree with me. We're here today because we love you. We put up a tent because we love you. I preach like this because because I love you. Why do I love you? Because Jesus loved me and sent somebody to tell me the truth about God's everlasting love. Hold those hands up. You want my prayer. There are many of you that are paralyzed by fear and fear has tormented you. Today when I pray over you, that fear is going to break off your mind. It will no longer have any effect or power over you. I want you to hold your hand up if you want to be delivered from all fear, worry, panic, anxiety. Lift your hand up right now. Some of you have great fear of lack, lack of finances, lack of health. You need to raise your hand. I'm going to pray for you today. I'm going to pray for everybody with one prayer. And people are going to be set free and delivered by the power of God. I want everybody to stand on your feet that put up your hand quickly. Quickly, you had your hand up. Stand. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Anybody else? Stand. Stand. You say, Pastor, I want you to stand. Stand. Why are you sitting back down? Stand. Stand. Please. Stand. I want everybody now to stand with them. Everybody in the tent. Everybody outside the tent. Those in your car, get outside your car. Stand. We're going to pray together. We're going to believe God for the greatest miracle of all, the salvation of a soul. The greatest miracle of all, the salvation of a soul. The greatest miracle of all. Those of you, there you go, getting out of your cars. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Today we're going to deal a death blow to fear and it shall not rise its head again. People are going to be delivered instantaneously by the power of God. People are going to be healed right there in their chairs by the power of God. I want everybody to say this prayer. Father... Everybody shout it out the top of your lungs like you at Yankee Stadium. Father, I come to you today in the name of your holy child, Jesus Christ. I repent of every sin that has separated me from you. Some of you need to pray that right there in your home right now. You need to say, Father, I repent. Everybody together say, Father, I repent of every single sin that has separated me from you. I repent of it now. Cleanse me by your blood. Deliver me by your mighty power. I thank you, Lord, that you have given me this precious opportunity to get my life right with you. I am through with the world. I'm through with this flesh. Devil, say it right now loud. Devil, say it like you want them to hear you. Devil, you have no power over my life. Your power is no longer at work in my life. You are defeated and I have the victory. Therefore, I declare before heaven, before earth, before your hell, I am saved. I am redeemed. I am forgiven. I am on my way to heaven. Now shout like you really believe it. Lift your hands now. Father, I thank you for the miracle working power. I thank you that healing is being released to every person under this tent. I thank you, Lord, 
You're touching every muscle, every organ, every molecule, the bloodstream. You're touching hearts. You're touching minds. You're touching vertebrae. You're touching discs. I thank you right now. You're touching optic nerves. You're touching auditory nerves right now and eardrums. Lord, I thank you for miracles. I thank you that you're healing equilibriums that are off. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for vi perfect vision, 2020 vision. I speak to the digestive issue. I speak to cancer. Cancer, you know who I am. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. You have no power over the people of God. I command cancer, get out of your body now in the name of Jesus. I speak to tumors in the brain. I speak to tumors on liver. I rebuke it in the name. Where are the church people? I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. We claim healing that by your stripes we are healed. We declare right now to those watching around the world. We send the word. Be healed. Be delivered. Be set free by the power of God. Lift your hands high. I break off of you every spirit of fear every spirit of anxiety I rebuke and I lift the weight of worry you will not be paralyzed by panic you will not be frightened or freak out by fear but you will be full of faith from this day forward I release a greater gift and measure of faith to the people of God that you will be steadfast you will be immovable you will always abound in the work of the Lord you will be unwavering your faith will be unshakable you, a faith, will be unstoppable. You will be stronger than ever before. You will have victory in every situation. Every battle will turn to a breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Now shout like you got faith for miracles. Shout like you got faith. Shout like you got faith. Shout. Shout. Hold the hands up. Stay in the anointing. Lift your hands all the way up. Now, I release extraordinary favor to every person under this tent and those outside the tent, those at home. Unstoppable favor. Favor in your family, favor in your business, favor in your finances, favor in your relationships. Favor on your job, favor with your employer, favor with your supervisor. I pray for supernatural favor this week. Favor that will bring sudden increase and miraculous elevation. Now lift your hands if you need an increase of income. Raise your hands if you need an increase of salary. Raise your hands if you need an increase of wages. Raise your hands if you need an increase of profit. I release it now by the Spirit of God. I declare right now that, Lord, you're sending now prosperity. You don't delight in poverty. You delight in prosperity. I don't know how you could be sitting down if you need a miracle. Lift your hands right now. I invoke the free favor of God. I invoke the blessing and the abundance abundance of God upon your life, upon your home, upon your mind, upon your relationships, upon your children. You shall not lack anything. You shall not lack anything. You shall not lack anything. Father, my faith is in you. You promised me you will sustain your people in a time of economic uncertainty. Lift your hands. Worshippers never get bored. True worshipers never get bored. True worshipers. Not entertainers. True worshipers. Lift your hands. Say this with me. Lord, I will say. That was half of you. Shout, Lord, I will say continually, because I favor your righteous cause, let the Lord be magnified, who delights in the prosperity of his people. Lift your hands and say, I am prospering. I am healed. I am blessed. I am 
free. I am whole. I am powerful. I am the head. I am not the tail. I am above. I am not beneath. I'm blessed when I come in. I'm blessed when I go out. Say it. Raise your hands and say, I refuse to live in lack. Until you believe that, you'll never experience it. I will, I shall not lack for anything. Say that. I shall not lack. God sustains me. Lift your hands. Say, God sustains me. God sustains me. The Bible says even in a famine, you're going to laugh. We've got to read the Bible. Turn off the news. Turn off the mass media hysteria that's paralyzing you. Put on some faith. Put on some Holy Ghost preaching. Put on some Holy Ghost shouting, dancing music. Be empowered by the anointing of God. And you will not be paralyzed by fear. The worst thing you can do, hear me and I close as we get ready to honor God with our best offering. You cannot watch the news all day and expect to be full of faith. You are either full of faith or you're full of fear. There's no in between. Remain standing. I just stood for an hour and 20 minutes. You can stand. If you can, I'll pray for you. Miss Deborah will lay hands on you. The pastors will lay hands on you. And you'll be healed to be able to stand. We've been sitting too long. We've been silent too long. It's time to stand up and preach the uncompromised gospel. Shout, clap your hands, give God a praise. Shout, clap your hands, give God a praise. You know, the Bible says, Michael, in a day of famine, we will be satisfied. In the day of famine, we will be satisfied. When you prioritize the work of God, I promise you this, I live by it. Not that you won't go through a difficult season, I would be a liar. But your faith will keep you through the difficult season. Everyone today that honors God, I promise you, I make you this promise because it's God's word, it's not mine. He promised if you honor me, I will provide for you all the days of your life. If you honor me, I will provide for you all the days of you. Lift your hands. Those of you that honor God and don't rob God, he will provide for you every day of your life. How many of you missed, how many of you had no food through this so-called pandemic? How many of you had never ate? How many of you, how many of you had no food? Nobody, nobody fed you. Nobody gave you anything. Nobody gave you anything. Even the people under this tent out for the outreach, God's have provided for you through our ministry. Jackie, come here. Come here, Jackie. Come on up here. Come on up here with me. This is a soul winner on fire for God. Her and her husband have a business in uh, Michigan, and she traveled. She came with Miss Deborah George. She's also connected with Pastor Rod Parsley and the ministry there in uh, Elkhart, Indiana. And... Uh, She's been out on the streets with Deborah George twice a day. Yesterday they were out for about eight hours evangelizing, telling people about the love of Jesus. Souls have been saved. People have been delivered. It's been awesome. It's been awesome. I'm watching all, I'm hearing all the testimonies. I'm getting all the messages. And I, I, I can't be more excited than I am right now. I really can't. But she, she, she just wanted to be, be a blessing. So she said, I just want to come. And yesterday she was out buying chicken and buying cupcakes and buying all kinds of food and we, we said, you know, we want your receipts. We want to reimburse you. And she said, no, I just want to be a blessing. I want to pay for it all. I just want to be a blessing. She's not even from our city. She's not even from Long Island, church. She's not even from our area. And she wanted to invest and sow a seed and be a part of it. I just wanted to publicly thank you for your love, for your support, and the fire and the hunger you have for God. And we're so glad that God connected us. Come on, give her a hand. And Preston, come on up here. 
There's another wild Holy Ghost Shuttlesworth. How many of you love Preston? God used you Friday night. Awesome service here Friday under the tent. We're doing it every Friday. I said we're doing it every Friday. We had a free barbecue, free hamburgers, hot dogs. I counted 63 young adults, which is awesome, which is a great turnout. But I need everybody to share the word this Friday night. Friday night fire 2040 under the tent, 7 o'clock. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. And uh, I'm going to have you share again. Is that all right? Yeah, no problem. Yeah, uh, so uh, last. Stay right here. Okay, right here. For, for, uh, yeah, because if, if he lets me go, I'll come in the aisle. I'll come right where you are. And I'll but, smack you. Uh, and he'll smack me, yes. <laughs> um, but um, so this past Friday, we had our young adults, and, um, and uh, I gave the altar call. And when people, young people came forward, presence of God was strong at the altar. They were crying, getting full of the Holy Ghost. And then I saw people reach into their pockets to grab things. They were reaching their pockets, pulling stuff out. I didn't know what they were doing, reaching for their phone or keys, whatever. But then I got big, get, began to see lighters, cigarettes, all these sorts of things that young people are being delivered from. And it was powerful because the gospel of Jesus isn't just words. It isn't just what we speak, but it can set people free by the power of God. This is, this is, this is my friend Peter who was in the service. Yeah, he's, th this is my friend Peter that came from the streets, and I just want him to quickly te testify about that night and what happened. Oh, uh, well, <clears throat> like I said that night, like, I saw a lot of spirit in everybody. I saw God. I saw Jesus. And you know what? It's really all about everybody getting together. Man, I don't even know what to really say. My head is wrapped around. I see all of you guys here. Thank you for coming. I'm sorry. I'm so nervous. <laughs> but you know what? Thank you again for coming here. Thank you for inviting me. We it's such you. a pleasure. We love you. Yeah. And this is a testimony because this was a man that was on the streets this week. And through the ministry of Miss Deborah and Miss Jackie and all our team. And yeah, and, and everything. He was in the church, gave up his, uh, was it a vape pen? Yeah, a, vape. a vape pen. And so God sent people free, saving them, filling up the Holy Ghost. Isn't it wonderful? Yeah. Somebody give Jesus a shout of praise. That's the best you can do. Come on. I said give Jesus a mighty shout of praise. 12 noon tomorrow. 12 noon. Everybody needs to get out there. I want to see people in praise team get out there. I want to see people in the media ministry get out there. We're all winning souls. That's what this is all about. It's all about winning souls. It's all about winning souls. Every leader should be on the street. Everybody should be winning souls in this season. Amen. So today we're going to bless the work of God. We're all my tithers. We're all the givers. Where are you? Where are you? Come and stand down here with me. Don't worry, I'm not going to ask you to join hands. I already broke the spirit of fear. You shouldn't even worry about that. Come on down here quickly, everybody. Quickly, quickly. If you want to keep your distance, keep your distance. That's okay, but come on down here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Tithers, givers, where is everybody? Come on up here. Hallelujah. Praise God. You need an envelope, lift your hands. Hallelujah. Everybody online, text to give, PayPal. Amen. Every way to give is right there on your screen. Tomorrow we're going to be praying under the tent for your family. Now, if I'm coming to pray for your family, how many of you know the smart thing to do is come and join your faith with me? How many of you got family members you're believing to be saved and set free this year? Amen. Amen. Amen, Rhonda. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. Lift your hand if you're believing for salvation to come to every member of your family. We're coming to pray tomorrow night. It's going to be on fire for one hour. Thursday night, 7 o'clock, miracle explosion service. It's going to be awesome. You don't want to miss it. And we'll be back under the tent Sunday. Somebody said, well, Pastor, how long are we going to be under the tent? Until God tells me to do something different. I'm going to follow the direction of the Holy Ghost. But it's your job to bring people. Some of you are coming by yourselves. You should be inviting everybody you know to come and be a part of this. Those that are in your cars, you can hear me on 87.7 FM, I believe it is. You can text it. You can sew and pay your tithes right there in your car. I want everybody right now, lift your hand if you need an envelope. We're going to put it in your hand. 
right now. We're going to put an envelope in your hand. Right now, if you need an envelope, hold your hand up. If you already got one, wave at me if you already got one. We love each and every one of you. Give generously today. Give your absolute best. Those online, please, not one person, go off the live without sowing and honoring God in your giving. We need your help to do everything we're doing. In the community right now, especially with the tent and the other expenses, we need you. I don't have to bore you with that. You already have my heart. How many of you have the vision and the mission of our ministry? That means you're a giver. That means you're a giver. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's do it now. Let's give our best. Every one of you, watch this now. Hear me. You're going to have an incredible day. Yeah. Were you blessed today? Yeah. Were you blessed today? How many of you know people leaving this tent healed, set free, and delivered by the power of God? We love each and every one of you. Tomorrow, 12 noon evangelism. Tomorrow night under the tent for prayer. 7 o'clock. We'll see you then. Everybody pay your tithes and honor God.